Hello and welcome to another one of my Chromatic Nature YouTube videos where I experiment with natural dyes and show you guys what happens. If you haven't seen my videos before, my name is Natalia. Nice to meet you. So this video is kind of a follow-up video to my last one, which was about morantine cotton fabric with various metal salts. In that video, I did not use any tannins in the morantine process. But now this video is all about the difference of morantine with tannin versus without tannin. So tannins are organic mordants. They are not mineral derived like the metal salts are. They are derived from plants. I know incorporating tannin in the mordanting process is supposed to make the color more light fast and wash fast, but I want to see the difference for myself. So I'm going to do a test with four dyes again. I'm not doing avocado dye this time. I'm actually doing sapin wood, which is this really cool dye that I just got in my shop. I want to see what works best for it. So this is how this experiment is going to go. I'm going to do six different mordantine methods here. Although it's really five because this one is the control. I'm not going to do any actual mordantine to it, but I am going to soak it in water while the others are getting mordanted. So the top row, these three pieces, are going to get mordanted without the use of tannins. So this one will be mordanted with alum, um, potassium aluminum sulfate, and I'm going to use it at 15% of the weight of fiber and simmer it for an hour. This one is going to be mordanted with aluminum acetate at 10% weight of fiber and then get a chalk after bath and it's not going to be heated. It's going to be, um, it will, it's going to start out hot because I'm going to dissolve the aluminum acetate in some hot water that I heat to about like 160. So it will be hot initially, but I'm not going to heat it on the stove. So that's that one. And then this bottom row, I am going to use tannin on. This piece is going to be mordanted with tannin at 10% weight of fiber, and that's all. So we'll see what that does without any of the metal salts. This one will be mordanted with tannin at 10%, and then a loom at 15%, just like this one. So basically, this is going to be it's mordanted same way as this, but with the tannin first. And same here, I'm going to mordant it with the tannin and then with aluminum acetate and chalk, just like this one. I'm going to start off this experiment by treating these three pieces with tannin. In this pot right here, and I'm going to use this sumac gallnut extract. And I'm going to do it at 10% weight of fiber. So all together, these three pieces weigh 56 grams. So 10% of 56 grams is 5.6 grams. Pretty easy. I got a more sensitive scale since the first experiment because I realized if I need to measure parts of a gram, I just can't do it on my normal kitchen scale. 5.8, 5.9, 5.9. Um, that's close enough. There's my tannin. Before I start with the tannin mordantine, I'm going to pre-wet these swatches by soaking them in room temperature tap water. This will ensure a more even mordantine. Alright, so I'm gonna start dissolving the tannin. This is water, I heat it up to 160 degrees. Then we add our tannin. Well, it looks pretty dissolved already. Then I'm gonna add two more cups of water, two more cups of water, and two more. So that's eight cups of water in there. I think it's enough water in there now to let those three pieces of fabric kind of flow freely. I'm not using gloves right now, but this is just wet with water, so I'm not touching anything that I shouldn't be touching with bare hands. 
Okay, that looks like a pretty good amount of water. Now I'm gonna put this on the stove. You need to heat this tannin solution up to about 160 and keep it between the temperatures of 160 and 180 Fahrenheit for an hour. Now that it's been at temperature for an hour, I'm going to push it off the heat and let it cool down. The fabric that was treated with the tannin looks more brown and a little more red than the fabric that's just been soaking in water. The thing with tannins is, besides being mordants, they are also in themselves dyes and they add color to your fibers. The tannin that I'm using, sumac gallnut extract, is supposed to be one of the lightest colored tannins that you can get, so it shouldn't interfere with the color of the dye too much. Now it's time to mordant with the salts. I'm going to mordant two of these fabric pieces with a loom, and I'm going to use 15% weight of fiber. The two pieces of fabric weigh 37 grams together and 15% of 37 is 5.55 so that's how much a loom I need to measure out right now. And that is pretty close. I am dissolving the loom with two cups of hot water that I heated up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't recommend anyone to stir hot water like this. There's two cups of water in here and I'm going to add eight more so it will be ten total cups of water. After stirring the alum solution around so it's totally mixed, I am splitting it into two different pots. I'm going to mordant the fabric separately so that the one that was mordanted with the tannin doesn't get any of the tannin on the other fabric. I wish I had two stainless steel pots in the same size, but I don't, so one of them's going to be kind of huge. These pots are going on the stove, and I'm going to heat them up to around 180. While the alum is heating up on the stove, I am going to measure out the aluminum acetate mordant for the two pieces of fabric that will be mordanted with that. I'm going to mordant them in two separate jars and this time instead of mixing it together and then splitting the solution, I decided to measure out the amount for each jar separately. One of the fabric pieces weighs 18 grams and the other one weighs 19 grams, so what I need is 10% of that weight in aluminum acetate, so one of the fabric pieces is going to get 1.8 grams of aluminum acetate added to the jar and the other one is going to get 1.9 grams of aluminum acetate. I'm adding hot water to the jars and stirring them until everything's dissolved in there. Now I'm adding more water to the jars. Uh, well, this is why it's a good idea to wear gloves and also to work with water that's 160 degrees as opposed to like 200 because at least 160 degree water won't burn your skin through a glove. Okay, now these fabric pieces are gonna sit in the solution for at least an hour. Turning our attention back to the alum solution on the stove, it's been at temperature for an hour now, so I'm gonna turn off the heat and let them cool. And now it's been over an hour of these pieces soaking in the aluminum acetate solution. So I'm taking them out and I'm replacing the water in the jars with fresh clean water. And I'm going to add calcium carbonate or chalk to this water and then give these fabric pieces a chalk after bath. I'm measuring out 5% of the weight of fiber in fiber and calcium, so half as much as I did of the aluminum acetate. I need about 0.9 grams of chalk for each of the two jars. Calcium carbonate doesn't dissolve in the water, so you don't have to stir it much. No matter how much you stir, it's not going to be clear. I'm going to let these fabrics sit in the calcium carbonate solution for about half an hour. The alum solution in the pots has cooled down now and it's now safe to squeeze the fabric's watches out and their mordanting is finished. 
And the last step of this morning teen marathon of mine is to rinse out the fabrics that have been soaked in the chalk solution so there's no chalk granules stuck to the fibers. Morning teen is complete. I allowed the fabrics to air dry and I'm cutting them up into quarters because I'm going to use them for four different dyes. And I'm putting my special markings on every individual piece so that I can look at any piece of this fabric and know which mordant method has been used on it. The fabric piece that was mordanted with tannin only for some reason has staining on it already. And now I'm ready to start dyeing. I have my jars labeled with each of the mordanting methods. I'm pre-wetting the mordanted fabrics first, each in their respective jar, with plain tap water to get them ready for dyeing. So I tried to use indicator paper strips to check the pH of these mordanted pieces of fabric to see if there's a difference. But um, they all look the same. They all look like they were between 7 and 8 on the pH scale, which is right in the middle. So it really didn't tell me anything. I poured the pre-wetting water out of the jars and now it's really time to dye. For real this time. The first dye that I'm going to use is logwood. Let's watch me make a huge mess. The pot was heavy, okay, and I was pouring it at very inconvenient for me angles. I'm letting the fabric sit in the dye overnight and we'll see what they look like tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and here's what I got. But what they look like now doesn't matter so much because they're still wet and what really matters is what they're going to look like after they're cured and rinsed. The next dye that I'm using is matter root, and I got this idea to add some calcium carbonate to the dye before I pour it in the jars to brighten and intensify the color. This addition of chalk really made the matter root dye look just like tomato juice. The following morning, right now the fabrics all look really bright and some of them very orange but I'm kind of worried that the chalk is staining them so we'll see if those stains become permanent. The next dye is Osage Orange which always gives me wonderful vibrant yellows that don't last in the sun and become very dull pretty quickly. I'm really hoping that combining metal salts and tannin will make this color more light fast. Fourth dye that I'm going to use is sapin wood. This is my first time working with this dye and I've heard that it's a lot like logwood and also gives a wide range of colors from red to purple. I'm actually taking my experiment even a step further with this dye. I cut off small pieces from each of the remaining mordanted pieces of fabric and I'm going to dye them together in the leftover dye that I have after pouring dye in all the jars and I'm going to add chalk into that dye so we'll see how these same mordanting methods shift in color when there's chalk added to the dye bath. As with all the other dyes, I let the fabric sit in the dye overnight and now it's time to look at the results. And it looks like we got a whole bunch of different colors. I'm finished with the dyeing and I'm letting all of the fabric pieces hang dry and cure for a couple days before I go ahead to rinse them out. All of the colors have cured for at least a couple days now and I'm going to give them a gentle washing with Synthropole. After I washed all of the fabric pieces, I let them air dry and then I ironed them. Ironing can damage natural dye colors and even synthetic colors, but if you do it on a lower setting and you're careful about it, the damage won't actually be permanent. A few minutes after the ironing, the color will go back to how it was before. One might think that I'm done now, 
but I need answers to the question of does tannin make natural dye more light fast. I'm cutting each of the fabric pieces in half and I'm taking one set of the halves and taping them on a piece of cardboard which I am then putting outside during sunny days with no cloud cover and I'm exposing them to a total of nine hours of sunlight this way. And to finish off this experiment, I sent the sun exposed fabric pieces through the washing machine with regular neutral detergent. And then I ironed them again so they aren't wrinkly. It's finally time to look at the results. So this is logwood. Same as in the last experiment video, the control did not take on any blue color so without mordant this is what you're getting with logwood the blue stains i'm guessing from me splashing some of the other mordant liquids on the control at some point even though i was trying to be careful and not let things like that happen but i think i did something like that tannin alone didn't do so well no blue i don't know what these stains are uh a loom did well just like it did last time. It looks nice and blue and rich. Aluminum acetate didn't do as well this time as it did last time. It's kind of gray. It's not very rich. It's not very purple or blue. The results from the method of tannin and a loom, it's kind of a dirty purple. It's like a very grayish plum color. But you know what did really good? Tannin with aluminum acetate. Which is so interesting because aluminum acetate by itself didn't do well this time, but it did great with tannin. Just so strange that this combined with tannin looks like this, but this combined with tannin looks like this. This is after sunlight exposure. These little squares are pieces that I cut off of the sun exposed piece during the sun exposure. So I took the first square off after three hours in the sun. I took the second square off after six hours in the sun. And the last one was taken off um, nine hours. And then this piece was washed. So the control faded from kind of a brown to just like a tan color in the sun. The mystery stains on the control did pretty well. So the tannin by itself, it didn't do great. Um, no blue color and even this kind of like golden brown color faded in the sun to just kind of be cardboardy. A loom did all right. Um, you can see it got lighter, but it's still a pretty good blue color. It didn't turn gray, you know, and it didn't turn brown. It got lighter and I can live with that. The tannin and the loom, the purple color kind of left. The aluminum acetate mordanted piece got pretty gray in the sun. See, like, the blue kind of came out, and now it's just kind of that underlying gray that's left. This is probably the only swatch here where I feel like there's no big difference. Well, this isn't a big difference, I guess, but it doesn't look that great anyway. I think this looks pretty good. It's still very rich, so I definitely think that tannin and aluminum acetate with chalk after bath did the best. The color is the richest and it really did not fade very dramatically. And Alum is number two. These are the matter roots results. The control actually looks pretty all right. It's kind of a nice pink. Tannin on its own is grayer and lighter than the control. A loom on its own. Very orange. I, very orange. As you saw, I added calcium carbonate to this dye bath 
and I kind of thought it was gonna make the color more red and give it like more blue tones. At least this one became radically orange, which I wasn't expecting. Aluminum acetate did pretty well. It looks pretty rich and bright. And then we have the tannins combined with the metal salts. And this color is pretty awesome, actually. Look at it compared to the control. It's so rich. So a lot of times you see that um, the richness of your color, it's not so dependent on the weight of fiber in dye that you're using, but the mordantine method. So tannin and aluminum acetate are kind of a surprise to me again because you would think tannin plus aluminum acetate it'd be somewhere in the middle or something but it's like very orange it's so orange it's not as orange as this one right here but it's very orange matter root after sun exposure we'll look at the control first as you can see it got lighter and lighter in the sun and then when I sent it through the wash, the yellow tones were washed out and it became more pale pink and less orange. But anyway, that was just one observation I made. So let's see what did better than the control. The tannin, um, it held on to more of those yellow tones, but it doesn't look very pink. So tannin on its own is not really impressing me. Aluminum got lighter. Eh. Aluminum acetate also got a pretty good deal lighter. It didn't hold on to the color very well. But look at this. Look at this color. Look at this color. This color right here is brighter than like any of the before sun swatches of the other mordants. And this is after sunlight and after being washed. So this did great. And this did pretty well too. Like it's a lot richer than any of the other after sun pieces, but it's definitely very orange and it definitely got even more orange and less red after sun exposure. It's interesting that here a loom and tannin did the best, whereas with logwood, it was aluminum acetate and tannin who did the best. This did pretty all right too. I guess it just depends what color you're going for. So if you want it to be redder, then you would like this more. But if you want a nice orange, then this is a pretty nice orange and it didn't fade that badly. So the tannins with metal salt win this dye as well. Next dye, Osage Orange. So control, it took on some yellow color, but it's pretty dull. Tannin on its own, looking less rich than the control. And then a loom on its own, very bright, very bright, bright yellow. Aluminum acetate and chalk, very rich. Um, it might not be as bright as a loom, but it's got a lot of richness to it. Tannin and a loom. It's interesting, the color is kind of greenish a little bit. Well, we'll see how it did in the sun, but initially it is a bit dirtier of a color than the others. And then tannin and aluminum acetate, looks pretty good. It's very intense, rich color. It's a little dirtier than without the tannin. Let's see if adding tannin improves the light fastness of this color. Control, as expected, not much color left to it. Tannin, it didn't really start with much color and it just got even duller. Aloom was so bright. Faded pretty quickly though, and this is no longer a very bright yellow at all. Same with aluminum acetate. It's very rich, 
but then after sun and you can see it happened very quick after three hours it was already this color yeah pretty dull a loom and tannin or i guess tannin first and then a loom it still got pretty dull this color is not so great aluminum acetate and tannin or tannin and aluminum acetate this color is not as bright as this. Um, it has a little bit of like a brownness to it, but the way it looks after sunlight, I feel like it's not too bad of a transition. This is still a pretty good yellow, which I can't really say for that or that. And while it is more brown and less saturated than it started out being. I feel like this is the least dramatic fading difference here. So I do think that if you're gonna use Osage Orange to create something that you want to wear outside or display outside, or even if you're gonna make fiber art that hangs on a wall that's exposed to sunlight, this is probably the method that will get you the most long lasting color. And we have sapinwood, the last dye. Um, and these pieces are the ones that were dyed in the dye bath with added calcium carbonate. The control is very radically different color from any of these mordanted ones. Also has mystery stains, which are also a good mordant, I guess. Mystery stains did well. I gotta say, tannin on its own didn't do well for any of the dyes. A loom on its own um, gave us a pretty good color. It's kind of mauve. Aluminum acetate and chalk without tannin is very purple. It's definitely the bluest of these swatches. Tannin with a loom gave this really nice, like, very makeup y color. It's very, like, lipsticky or blush. Yeah, very pretty color. I really like it. And then tannin and aluminum acetate. Look how rich that is. And it's a really nice, like, purpley fuchsia. Love this color. So the little swatches that were dyed in the dye bath with calcium carbonate added, they are definitely more blue. So in this dye bath, the addition of calcium carbonate did what I thought the addition of calcium carbonate would have done for the matter root dye bath. For some reason, the matter root became more orange. So this dye is another dye that's notoriously not light fast. So let's see if tannins helped keep this color the same. So, satinwood after sun exposure. Control became cardboardy. The little swatch that was dyed with more calcium carbonate. Um, also very dull, kind of brown. Tannin after sun became lighter. Same here. Okay, so loom got a whole lot lighter not a lot of color left after the sun. Aluminum acetate, that's a huge difference right there. <laughs> this color faded to this. So yeah, this is a pretty dramatic fading, but this one after sun is almost as rich as a loom before sun. And this is definitely a lot brighter than either of these after sun so after sun it was this color but then when i washed it look how much it changed all of the yellow tones left when it got washed and it became this all right and here's our last hope for this dye not fading okay so it faded a lot but if you just look at this color this is a pretty nice color. This after sun is brighter than these two before sun. Well, I mean, I guess this one's richer, but it's pretty close. So I think with this dye also, the combination of tannin and the metal salt did better. And I guess if I had to choose between this one and this one, I would say this one did the best 
because this color is clearly the richest out of all of the colors after sunlight exposure, and this color is the richest before sunlight exposure. Last thing I want to mention is the little, these little swatches. So I've noticed that when you use pH modifiers to shift a color, sure, right away, you can see a huge difference. After they dry, you can still see some difference. But after sunlight exposure, like that and that, not very different. And this looks a lot duller than this. This is more purple than that, but after the sun, this isn't really more purple than this. It's duller. I feel like after sunlight, the effect of the pH modifier used in the dye bath is not only undone, but it made the color less light fast. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the colors become more close to each other with time and definitely with sun exposure. And in some cases, the pH modifiers actually make the color less light fast than it would have been if you didn't use it. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. I'm gonna use them and play with them. I mean, it's fun to get like both this color and this color out of the same dye bath. I think after seeing these results, I feel like doing the Tan and Mordentin first step is worth it because it does make a pretty big difference. I still have lots of questions that I want to get answered. I want to test if uh, combining tannin with aluminum lactate gets me better results than aluminum lactate on its own. And I want to see how combining tannin with sodium acetate plus alum, how that does. Maybe even combining mordantine with tannin with soy milk mordantine. Is that something that could happen? If you would like to buy any of the ingredients that I used, all of the links are in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you come back and see what else I come up with next. Bye! And for my tannin, I'm going to use sumac gallbladder. After two hours of sunlight, four hours of sunlight, and no, wait. Do you guys like the little itty bitty swatches that I cut off of this mini piece when it was in the sun? So many little pieces of fabric.